yeah uh i don't know where i'm gonna be at today but i just got done with this last load from um yesterday evening uh i started from columbus ohio all the way over to um york pennsylvania <clears throat> um i grabbed me an empty and went to harrisburg pennsylvania so I drove about 30 miles north from where I dropped this other trailer. So I'm I'm sitting right here empty. And they have this other load that wants me to pick up some 65 miles away. It's got the same pickup and the same delivery. It's like the pickup address is the same as the delivery address. So they kind of confused me that they, this is not their first time doing it. They only do this once in a while, every couple of months or, you know, a couple of weeks. They want me to relocate over there so they can do some kind of routine with me. Well, they gave me some kind of lame message on the Qualcomm that didn't make any sense. So it looks like not only that, when I came over, before I came here, I told my DM over the Qualcomm if he could uh, give me another load going south, like, towards Virginia and then south to Florida for time off. He said, we'll see, I'll see what I can do. Well, <clears throat> that didn't happen yesterday. So it looks like I'm going to be going to waste the whole day today. You can see it's raining outside. You can see the water on the windshield. It's raining. So I got up. I got up like 4 o'clock. No, nah, I got up earlier than that. I got up like 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock. I don't remember. I got up sometime early this morning. It's now 7 o'clock. I've been sitting right here in the seat since since it was dark just now. And I've been sitting here since um, daylight. So it's 7 o'clock now. Um. Yeah, it's like... I rejected the next load that I already told them about. They want me to go to, um, I forgot, that's the that other side of New York somewhere. I told them I wanted to go south and they keep ignoring me. So I said, I'm going to reject this load. Not interested, reject this load. So they, they avoided it. They have to respond to me because I'm lease purchased now. It's not like I'm company driver anymore. Now since I'm lease purchased, I have certain benefits. So now since I, I turned it down, they voided it. It said void. So not only that, they want me to chase after this next load assignment that didn't make any sense. Well, I'm going to reject that one too because I feel the way I feel, I don't feel like being on the northeast side. And I'm not in a mood. I'm not in a good mood for a couple of days. I just want to hurry up and head home and sit, you know, catch my breath recharge not only that i gotta do a 34 anyways um it seemed like they don't know i didn't send any message saying that i'm going to reject that other one it's even worse than the, the 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 first one they sent me so all of this stupid bullshit that they're shoving in my face i'm just going to ignore it i'm just going to pretend like i didn't see it i'm just going to sit here the whole day wait for that dm to take over because i'm them idiots you know they ain't really doing so much of a good job on the weekends. And I already told that DM about that. So while they're still ignoring me and shoving shit in my face, I'm, I'm sitting right here for now. I'm going to spend the whole day right here and I'm not going to do anything. So it's like, this is my main subject. This is what, this is what I really had in my mind. I'm sorry I had to go through all of that stuff I just told you just now. That's not what I want to talk to you about, to tell you on this video. What I had in mind just now, I might want to add that to that that um, incident that happened to me in 2013. You remember that part where I said something about my, um, my kidneys going out and what I had to do? You know, while I was here driving trucks, you know, I had to dive into the ER. And that tooth situation and all that. Well, 
I got another one that might scare you and kind of gross you out. I don't know if you want to, you probably might get mad at me somewhere along the way, but let me tell you how this happened. What I, what this video is really about is, um, I had something on my mind that crossed me that happened in 2012. I was, um, I was driving, you know, working for these people, you know, they weren't original truck companies, you know, don't, don't give me that crap about, you know, what kind of company it is, please don't, that's not, that's not what I meant. This is one of them private backyard truck jobs, you know, like something you find on Craigslist. Yeah, it's the original tractor trailer, all right, but they're person, they're private people. It's not a truck company, really. So I drove for them. And I remember when I was, um, it's too bad. I would have opened the hood right now and showed it to you, but it's raining outside. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't feel like getting wet. Um, let me, let me try my best and see if I could explain it, if I could make you understand. All right, those, you know, those old Freightliner Sentries, right? They came out before the Cascadias. Yes, it was one of those I was um, in, right? I was driving. I was in this mechanic yard where they had a whole bunch of old trucks. And I had the hood popped open. And, you know, if you could see my hand. Move this crap out of the way. Over here somewhere. You know what? Maybe I better dive out the truck for a split second because... All this shit right here, you ain't gonna, you're not gonna understand me if I even, maybe I better off do it this way. I'm gonna get wet a little bit. I'm gonna just hurry up real quick and show you. On the freight line of Sentry, you know that the radiator is up here somewhere. The reservoir, it's like up in there somewhere. But on this Cascadia, the radiator is over here now. Yes, when I was standing up on the tire and I was there, you know, pouring, um, you know, when I was taking the cap off the radiator, when I was taking the cap off the radiator, um, I was getting ready to, you know, pour more fluid in there or something like that. So it seemed like I did it a bunch of times and nothing didn't happen, right? Well, I made a mistake. When I turned the radiator cap this time, this last time, yes, um, pressure came out and hit me in the eyes. It hit me in the face and shot 30 feet up in there. And I do mean something like 30 feet. When, um, when it shot me in the face, let me show you again. The radiator pressure hit me in the eyes. I covered my eyes like this and I kept running and running and running. It's like I was even much faster than this. I kept my eyes covered up. By the time I reached the end of the trailer, I was scared to open my, my eyes. I just moved my hands slowly and I was scared. I was scared to open my eyelids. So I started opening my eyelids and that's when I saw some blurriness. And then um, I'm just dramatizing what, what I did back in 2012. I'm just using this truck as an example. So it's like that's what happened to me. That was the first time in my life I ever made that mistake. I've been driving trucks for like between 2001 and 2012. I never ran into no situation like that. But it seemed like um, I made one of my dumbest mistakes right there. I got hit in the face with um, radiator pressure from one of these trucks, the one of the Freightliner Sentries. It shot 30 feet up in the air. I jumped off a front tire and I just showed you. I ran all the way back to the trailer within less than two seconds. And then that's when my um, my manager, my female manager and my male manager, both of them was husband and wife. I think one of them said, are you all right? They saw what happened. And when, you know, 
I did see some blurriness. That blurriness wasn't blindness. I didn't I didn't really go blind. That was just radiator fluid that was in the way. So it's like it took me a while to be convinced and then I realized that I almost lost my eyesight. So I got lucky. Not only that, but my chest, my chest was red. The back of my thumb right here, it had like a blood spot. It had like a burn. I had a burn on the back of my thumb. What else? Uh, I think, uh, I don't know. I think that lady named Trish, Trish um, or Devoy, one of them got some kind of towel or rag or something. I just, I don't know. I went back in the truck and started nursing myself anyway. I let like, um, you know, I didn't even go to the hospital. That's another thing. I didn't go to the hospital for that either. I didn't even see an eye doctor. I came back to normal just like that. And I kept driving too. Right after I got hit in the face, like about another hour or so, I dived right back in the truck and I kept driving. So, not only that, but I had another eye injury. It was um, at the body shop in 1994 somewhere. 95 I was at a body shop and um, I was using one of those grinders you know I was shredding off some metal off the um, surface of the car the side of the car a piece of metal got stuck in my eyeball it got stuck on the front of my eyeball and I went to bed with it just like that back in them days I didn't have no insurance and I was just working at one of them shady tree mechanic shops one of them body shops and I went to bed with that thing. And it was cutting my eyelids. It, it was cutting my eyelids pretty good. And I came back to work the next day. And this other dude that's the same age as me. Me and him was like 25 years old. And um, he took one of them grass straws. You know, like he pulled out a blade of grass off the ground. And he took my head back. Opened my eyes. And he stuck the blade of grass up against my eyeball and pulled it out. He took it out real slow. It still felt like it was in there, but I could tell he took it out anyways because my eyelids wasn't cutting up against it. I don't know how he did it, boy, but them guys are smart. So when he took the piece of metal out my eyeball, um, I it took like a couple of hours. It took like, I don't know. It took like an hour or so. And the pain, the burning, the burning inside my eye went away. You know, it didn't stay the same anymore. Yeah, yeah, my vision was blurred. My vision was blurred in one eye. And then over a period of time, like one or two weeks, it came back to normal. So it's like I could see pretty much the same in both eyes. I'm not too sure about the left one. But maybe I'm still defected by it. But anyways, I've been... I never had no problems driving this truck anyway, so I've been all right. So, it seemed like, I don't know. It's like, um, I guess the reason why I'm shooting this video is because I did have some kind of accident outside the truck. Outside one of those trucks in 2012. I just told you. It wasn't a truck accident. It was me handling something underneath the hood. And it backfired against me. So I got hit in the I got hit in the face with water pressure from the radiator, and it was regular temperature. Yeah, the engine was running too. I know you might say it's dumb and crazy, but in a way, when the engine is running, yeah, you can pull a cap and nothing will happen. I did it a couple of times. Yes, I realized I was boneheaded back then. But the thing is, um, I did it enough times after the engine warmed up and nothing will happen. It's just I realize when it reaches maximum temperature or when it reaches a certain temperature, yes, you can't open it. So it's like I did it so many times I thought I was okay and all of a sudden I get hit in the face. And I even did it again the second time. It went, it shot up 30 feet in the air again. And yes, I did it because, you know, I, back in them days, you know, I used to do some kind of, you know, patchwork routine whenever something goes wrong with those trucks i try to do it myself yeah i did it while i was out there you know that's what 
that's what us guys have to do. Some of us, you know, having it hard in the economy times. You know, you know, there's a lot of shit going on in the United States. You got to find odd jobs, private jobs, you know, all, all kinds of crap. So it's like that's since, you know, them regular trucking companies wasn't hiring me back then. I just took a short way out. So I went on Craigslist and I got one of these jobs. So anyway, I nearly got scarred that time, but it seemed like I'm 100% healed. I'm cured. So I got lucky. I thought I lost my sight. I thought I was going to go blind for sure. So since I am um, out to come back and I got past that, I wind up diving back in the truck about 30 minutes later and I kept hauling ass. I couldn't stop. So there you have it. Um, let me see what else I got. That's no joke. I'm not, I'm not trying to entertain you here. I don't know if some of y'all get scared to death or what, but I'm telling you. Let me tell you the difference between a tractor trailer, what I think. Since uh, it did, I can't remember how painful it was. It seemed like it wasn't really painful that much. I did get burns all right. It seemed like I must have forgot, but it didn't really hurt as bad as I thought it would. I did get redness on the chest and I got burns on the back of my thumb. It turned into a cross and I peeled the, peeled the skin off. But it wasn't serious at all. It was very minor. It's just that my eyes I was worrying about. I thought I was going to go blind. But I'm all right. I didn't even go to a doctor or nothing. But the thing is... um. I noticed something really scary more than the tractor trailer. I think trucks, truck temperature is minor than minivans and cars. I really think car radiators are much harder than trucks. I think radiator fluids inside minivans and cars are worse than tractor trailers. I guess because trucks are bigger, they got a bigger size water jacket inside the, um, the crankcase, you know, like the the walls of the crankcase. Yeah, the water jacket is more bigger. It's got more, um, what do you call it? I can't really describe it. I don't know if I could draw it and show you. But anyway, the water jacket inside the, um, the walls of the crankcase is probably more bigger. The engine's got a bigger size. So it's not so small and compact. It doesn't pack all that temperature. Not only that, the radiator and everything is much bigger. So it's a little bit cooler than the car, than any car radiator. I think the car is worse than the tractor trailer. If I ever get hit in the face, forget it. I don't know. I'm going to be making some kind of noise. As tough as I am, <laughs> I fucking hate to find out. Lucky I didn't, I never had that happen to me once. But my first time experience, um... Getting hit, in, getting hit in the face by a truck, a full-size semi-truck. Yes, that was my first time experience. I never dreamed it would happen to me, but it did. And I got past it and I got lucky. Let me add another thing. Um, I'm, not, I'm not really clumsy or nothing. It's just that I might want to add this other... I don't know if you want to call it tidbits or whatever, but um, it's one time when I was on FFE's truck back in, I can't tell, it might be 2002 or three. Um, You know that Eminem's plant in um, Tennessee? I think it's in Knoxville or Nashville or one of them. It's some part of Tennessee. Eminem's, yeah, you know FFE pulls reefer trailers. Mostly reefer, reefer trailers. And they got Lisa Motor Lines. And they got MTC. And they got especially American Eagle. They pull dry vans only. I remember all of this. It took me a while, but I remember. American Eagle, FFE, Lisa Motor Lines. All of them was in one terminal. They're different companies, but they're one terminal. Just like you got... Sprite, Sunkiss, Pepsi, all of them is like bunched up. And you got M&M's, Mars, you know, they're like 
you know, like, you know what I'm talking about? So anyway, um, I was in this, this Eminem's plant in, um, what was it? Tennessee. Yeah. When I was dropping this trailer, I realized that, I've, um, you know, it's one of those slopes. Let me see if I could drive, drive. I'm going to try not to make this video too long. I thought it was going to be short. Let me just use a rough sketch. Just like I did on one video, I'm going to do it on this one. All right. It was one of them dirt mounds or one of them dirt pavements. It's not like a regular pavement. Here it is right here. You see that surface right there? All right. I'm going to try to make it good as possible. This is a 53 foot trailer right here. Here's the reefer unit. This is the legs. And these are the tandems. This is the tire. This is the reefer right here. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this. I guess that's like that. F, F, E. It says FFE as in Frozen Food Express. Here's a kingpin. This is what happened. It's not exactly like this, but I had to drop the trailer on one of them surfaces right here in the M&M's plant. Would you believe that as soon as I pulled the, the when I pulled the fifth wheel lever, the truck rolled away from the trailer and I had to chase after it. I had to chase after it. Let me give you an example. When I had the door open like that, as soon as I pulled the fifth wheel lever, the truck rolled away. It almost missed my foot right there. I had to chase after it. And guess what? I had to dive chest first on the fucking seat and pull the friggin' air brakes real quick. And that's how I saved the truck from rolling down the hill. They actually had the trailer. They had these trailers on top of some hill. So when you drop the trailer at the edge of the hill, the truck can actually roll away. I guess, uh, I don't know. It's like, I could have swore I did. You know what? I, you know what? where I went wrong? You probably caught this already. You already beat me to it. I guess I didn't pull the yellow knob out when I backed in. That's what happened. But anyways, if that level, if this, um, if this surface right here was straight, then that probably wouldn't have happened. The truck would have just stayed there. But, you know, it's like, it's not like I did it on purpose. It's probably, it's just, you know, it's human error. I know I made that mistake on one of them videos, like, way back a couple of months ago when, um, you remember that part where I forgot to pull out the pigtail and I heard a noise? It actually, it, excuse me, it actually whiplash and hit the back of the truck. I did that like two or three times since I picked up this truck right here. Yeah, I forgot the pigtail and it snapped and I got pissed off. I got angry. Yeah. It's not like, I'm not like, uh, I'm not an amateur or nothing, you know. It's just distraction. I just, I get easily distracted. It's like. I got stuff floating through my head and I constantly, you know what I mean? It's, I'm one of those types. I'm not, I've been a professional driver. I still am. It's just that I get distracted. It's like I got my mind on something else. When I get caught up thinking of stuff, when I'm in a hurry to do something, I get desperate. So when I get distracted and desperate, I'm in a hurry to do something. That's when I forget. So I look like on FFE's truck, I forgot. To pull this knob out when I was getting ready to drop the trailer. And that's why the truck rolled away from me. I had to chase after it. Landed chest first, chest first on the seat. And yanked the um, knob out. And that's when it stopped. I actually saved the truck from going down the hill. It would have went 20 miles an hour. 
if I didn't catch it. All hell would have broke loose. It would have crashed into them other trailers, but I saved it. But anyways, um, you know what? It's 25 minutes now. I think I'm going to go ahead and cut it. Um, all right, I guess if I got anything to say. Oh, yeah, wait a minute. I told you all about this on the other video. Um, yeah, the club. <clears throat> I think this came out. This came out sometime in the 1990s, late 1980s. I don't remember. I used to see this on the TV. I know one of y'all said that. Yeah, I used to have this on my minivan. It does work. Even before I bought it, I'm over here saying to myself, if um. If I put it on, this was before I bought this yesterday. If I put this on this truck, it should go up against right here or up against the Qualcomm if somebody tried to steal it. If they try to turn the steering wheel, the handle should go up against the Qualcomm or it should go up against the door. If I switch it around, if I turn it this way, the handle will go up against here. Or it would go up against the Qualcomm again if they try to steal it. Still the same thing almost. That's another good thing. It don't matter. I'm keeping this bitch for the rest of my life. I don't care. I'm letting it stay that way. So there, there it goes. All right, so much for that. Um, I'm just trying to squeeze in a bunch of useful information as much as I can. I don't know what else to do. Today's a Sunday anyways. You can see it's all wet outside. I'm not going to bust my ass and work, work like a slave unnecessary just to do some kind of odd bullshit routine that I can't understand. I even told them on the Qualcomm, I don't understand what they're trying to say. So whenever I get the chance, I'll just crank up the, you know, I'll just turn the Qualcomm on, type another message. They ain't going to see it anyway, so forget about it. I'm going to just wait for that DM to show up and I'll just tell him what's going on. All right, I'm going to cut this one short. I'm gonna, I mean, I'm going to cut it right now. So if I got something else in mind, I'll let you know. All right, I'll check you out later.